Welcome to my kitchen where everything feels like comfort and tastes like home. Come on in and take a seat and stay a while. I'm Chef Tommy V and today we are going to be making something that is so nostalgic for me. We are making mini turkey meatloafs. It reminds me of my childhood when my mom used to make these for us and it was such a comforting meal. And so I'm going to bring that same love, that same comfort feeling into your home. So join me today as we make these wonderful meatloafs, mini meatloafs. We're using ground turkey. We have some dry <laughs> cornbread that we're going to use for the meatloaf. We have some peppers and onions, some mayonnaise, some salt and pepper. And we have some poultry seasonings as well as it's going to be smothered in a mushroom gravy. So let's get started. First, we're going to take our ground turkey and put it inside of our bowl. And I am going to Add all of the ingredients in the bowl at one time so that way I can get my hands in there one time mixing everything together so I'm not overworking my meat. So we have our peppers, our onions, all of the measurements that we're using for the recipe will be listed in the description as well as you will be able to find this recipe on vincentcountry.com. We have our cornbread dressing, we have our mayonnaise, some pepper, and our salt. We have some rosemary and thyme and parsley here. So I'm going to take them and mince them all together. The easiest way to move the leaves off of the herbs, the fresh herbs, is just go in the opposite direction of the twig and they'll slide right off for you. Parsley. Okay, we're gonna add our herbs. I'm gonna mix everything together. I'm gonna take off my ring just so I don't get any of the meat underneath. I do have a bowl of water here that um, I will be using to dip my fingers in when I go to form the mini meatloafs. One thing, water and fat do not mix. So if your, fing if your hands are wet, they have that coat of water on them the meat won't get all stick, sticky and stick to your fingers. But I'm gonna go in with my hands right now and start mixing all of the ingredients together. Now one thing I do, I take my meat out of the refrigerator um, so it can set out for a minute. Um, I don't know about you, but when the meat, the ground meat is freezing cold, it's almost very uncomfortable getting in here with your hand to bring all these ingredients together. So I take it out just for a level of comfort when I'm mixing everything together. Okay, so we got everything all mixed together. Everything is all incorporated. So I can go ahead and I can start forming the patties. Let me just rinse some of this excess off my hands. I'm gonna turn on my cast iron skillet so that it can start warming um, and getting prepared for us to put the meatloaf in. And you wanna put some oil in your pan so that it also can start um, heating up along with the pan. I have my cutting board here, so I'm going to form the individual meatloafs and I'm going to put them right on here so I can carry them over and put them right into the cast iron skillet. You do not have to use a cast iron skillet, but my cast iron skillet is my baby, so I use it as often as I can. See how my hands, there's no meat sticking on my fingers because I've dipped it in the water and the water is protecting my hands from the fat sticking. And I'll just put them right on the board. Okay. 
I try to make sure that they're all the same size so that way from a cooking um, perspective they're all cooking at the same rate. If you know how many people you're serving you can actually make the sizes according to that to ensure that you make enough for everyone to have a serving. Okay so they're all formed and I'm going to put them in the skillet. I'm going to brown each meatloaf on each side and then I'm going to remove them from the pan and I'm going to make my mushroom gravy and then I'll put them back into the pan to finish off the cooking. Okay, so we're going to take them out the pan. And the meat that's sticking in the pan, that's fine. That's just more flavor for our gravy. So we're going to add in some butter. Let me turn down my flame. Add in some butter. And our flour. We can create our roux for our gravy. We're going to add in some chicken stock slowly so we can start working it all together. It's important when you're making your gravy to make sure that you allow for it to come to a boil after you've added your liquid into your roux so that you can cook off that starchy taste that's generated from the flour. Okay, the gravy is nice and smooth. It's definitely at the texture that I like my gravy at. Um, it's not too thick, it's not too thin. If it was more thick than you like it to be, you can always add some more liquid into it to thin it out some. And if, if it was not thick enough, then at this point you would wanna create a slurry, which is mixing the flour and the water in a separate dish and adding it in that way versus just putting the flour directly into this gravy right here. If, because if you did that, you would generate a bunch of lumps in the gravy. I'm gonna add our meatloafs back into our gravy because they need to continue cooking. Put them back in. I'm gonna cut our temperature down. And I'm also going to add in our mushrooms. This may appear to be a lot of mushrooms, but mushrooms cook down. So you wanna make sure you have enough to have a mushroom gravy. I'm gonna put a lid on top of our pan so that the steam can begin to cause those mushrooms to begin to wilt and to soften down. It'll also help that steam to move through the meat to cook the inside of the mini meatloafs. So we'll put the lid on and allow for it to cook for 25 minutes and then we'll check and see where we are. Let's see what we're working with. Mm. You can smell the herbs in the cornbread dressing that are in the meatloaf and it almost makes you feel like Thanksgiving. I know I'm thankful. I'm thankful for this food that has been prepared for my family. I'm thankful for the opportunity to have food in my home, in my pantry, because there are some people who do not have food to eat. So we will make sure that in this moment of gratitude that we will enjoy this food. And as a gift to you all, I'm sharing this comfort and this warmth with you. I hope that you will take the opportunity to prepare this recipe for you and your loved ones and that you will enjoy it as much as I did as a child growing up. I remember the moments when my mom used to make this for us and I remember how it felt so good and comforting on the inside and I could feel every ounce of love that she put into this dish. Always, always top it off with love. Always, always share the love with other people. I'm glad that you came and you stayed a while. And I hope that you will join me again on the Chef Tommy V YouTube channel and continue to watch 
stay a while. Hey, I'm glad you stayed a while. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment, and let me know some things that you would like for me to share with you on my YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit that notification button so you know when I post.